This is the first video in a series of videos about Word 2013 Unit A in which we're going to be focusing on creating documents with Word 2013. In this unit we're going to be focusing on the following objectives. First of all we're going to be able to understand word processing software. Then we're going to explore the word window. Then we're going to start a document and save a document. Then we're going to select text then format text using the mini toolbar and the ribbon. And we're also going to use a document template and we're going to navigate through a document. Well, first of all, let's focus in on uh, this information on understanding word processing software. And this information will be found in on page Word 2 out of your textbook. And first of all, we must understand that a word processing program or word processing software is software that allows you to enter, edit, and format text and graphics. And of course Microsoft Word is a powerful word processing program that's going to allow you to create and enhance a wide range of documents quickly and easily. Now the electronic files that we're going to be creating in Word and these files are going to be called documents. And of course one of the benefits of using Word uh, is that document files can be stored on a hard disk or on your hard drive, a flash drive, a sky drive, or on other storage devices, which is making them easy to transport, exchange, and revise. And as we said, the file that we're going to be creating, this is our data file, and all these files are going to be called documents on there. And this is an example of a document on there. Because in Word, we're going to be able to complete uh, some of the following tasks uh, that's on there. Uh, we're going to be able to type and edit text which the word editing tools makes it simple to insert and delete text in a document. You can add text to the middle of an existing paragraph, replace text with other text, undo an editing change, and correct typing, spelling, and grammatical errors with ease. You can also copy and move text from one location to another. Using the more advanced editing features in Word, you can copy or move text from one location and insert it in a different location in a document. You can also copy and move text between documents. This means you don't have to retype text that is already entered in a document. You can also format text in paragraphs with fonts, colors, and other elements. The sophisticated formatting tools in Word allow you to make the text in your documents come alive. You can change the size, style, and color of text, add lines and shading to paragraphs, and enhance lists and bullets and numbers. Creatively, formatting text helps to highlight important ideas in your documents. Also, you can format and design pages. The page formatting features in Word gives you the power to design attractive newsletters, create powerful resumes, and produce documents such as research papers, business cards, brochures, and reports. You can change paper size, organize text in columns, and control the layout of text and graphics on each page of a document. For quick results, Words includes uh, pre-formatted cover pages, pull quotes, and headers and footers, as well as galleries of coordinated text, tables, and graphic styles. If you're writing a research paper, Word makes it easy to manage reference sources and create footnotes, endnotes, and bibliographies. Word also allows you to enhance documents with tables, charts, screenshots, and videos. And using the powerful graphics tool in Word, you can spice up your documents with pictures, videos, photographs, screenshots, lines, shapes, and diagrams. You can also illustrate your documents with tables and charts to help convey your message in a visually interesting way. Word also allows you to accomplish uh, tasks such as mail merge to create form letters and mailing labels. And the Word mail merge feature allows you to send personalized form letters to many different people. You can also use mail merge to create mailing labels, directories, email messages, and other types of documents. And also, Word allows you to share documents securely. The security features in Word makes it quick and easy to remove comments, track changes, and unwanted personal information from your files before you share them with others. You can also add a password or a digital signature to a document and convert the file to a format suitable for publishing on the web. Now what you're seeing on the screen right here, uh, this is an example of a report uh, that was used creating Word. And if we see on here that Word can add headers to every page. Also you can insert graphics, and this is where you can format the size and appearance of text, create column to text, 
tables, charts, you can make bulleted lists, uh, you can align text and paragraphs evenly so that they fill up the space, and also footers with page numbers and everything else on there. Uh, but you have to remember before you create a new document, it's a good idea to spend time planning it. And you want to make sure that you identify the message you want to convey, the audience for your document, and the elements such as tables, charts, and everything else that you want to include. And that is the one of the main points that we want to look at on here. And you should also think about the tone and look of your document. If you're writing a business letter, which should be written in a pleasant but serious tone and have a formal appearance, or if you're creating a flyer that must be colorful, eye-catching, and fun to read. The purpose and audience of your document determine the appropriate design, planning, the layout, and design of a document involves deciding on how to organize the text, selecting the fonts to use, identifying the graphics to include, and selecting the formatting elements that will enhance the message and appeal of the document. And of course, for longer documents such as newsletters, it can be useful to sketch the layout and design of each page before you begin. Next, we want to take a look at the word window. And of course, we see that there's some several different elements here, but what we're going to do is we're going to break away from this PowerPoint presentation and we're going to open up Word. Now, when you take a look at Word, uh, it opens up a little bit differently than in previous versions. Uh, what we have here is that it has our welcome screen. And on this welcome screen, we're going to have to open up a blank document. And that's typically the one that's already selected here for us. We just have to click on blank document. And what's going to happen is it's going to bring us to our Word window. Now, this version of Word, Word 2013, is a little bit different than some other versions uh, that have been out there. Uh, because it seems like in every different version that they have, there's always some subtle changes that are there uh, in which you have to kind of pick up on. Uh, but ultimately, Word behaves in the same type of way as it always has been. Now, when we take a look here, let's move our mouse pointer over some of the objects around the word window and take a look. Well, one of the first things that we're going to see is at the very top is what we have our t is our title bar. And the title bar is going to display the name of the document and the name of the program. And of course until you give a new document a different name, its temporary name or default name is going to be document one. And then of course we see that this is in Word. And uh, you may also see it on here in some other versions as Microsoft Word. Next we're also going to take a look over here and this is going to be our quick access toolbar. And the quick access toolbar, which includes buttons for saving a document and for undoing, redoing, and repeating a change. You can modify the quick access toolbar to include commands you use frequently. And you can easily do that by clicking on this little button right here, which is the customize quick quick access toolbar button in which you can actually add in some other ideas or even some other commands. And you can also show it below the ribbon as well. Also we have on here, we have the Microsoft Word Help. And the Microsoft Word Help button allows you to access the Word Help system. Now one thing that you're probably noticing is when I point to some of these objects, you're seeing a little box that's appearing just below uh, the mouse pointer. And that is what we call a screen tip. So generally, when you point to something in Word, it's going to give you the screen tips that's on there when you point to it. Also, uh, we do have, and this is a new button for 2013, and this is the Ribbon Display Options button. And when you click on this, we can see that we can either auto-hide the ribbon, show the tabs, or show the tabs and the commands. And generally, that is the default that's on there is the show tabs and commands. Uh, but depending on how um, familiar you are with Word, uh, depends on really what you want to show. Also, we do have our command buttons over here, uh, minimize, maximize, or restore, or restore down, I should say, and also our close button. Now, this is new for 2013, which is similar to some older versions of Word, is which they bring back the file uh, on there, in which this case, this is what we call the file tab. And that provides us access to what they're referring to now as the backstage view to where you manage files and the information about them. Now the backstage view includes commands related to working with documents such as opening, printing, and saving a document. The file tab also provides access to your account and to the Word Options dialog box which is used to customize the way you use Word. And when you click on it, 
uh, used to in earlier versions, it would bring down uh, just a drop down menu. Now, this replaced what we called the uh, office button in a previous version, such as 2007 and so on on there. And when you click on this, this is what we call the backstage view. And this either provides us some information about our document, we can create a new document, we can open documents, save them, save as, we can print them, share them, export them, or we can close the document. But also it provides you access to your account uh, because they're making these uh, office programs more and more online uh, on there and allows them to be uh, utilized in many different areas. Also provides us an area for our Word Options, in which it does open up the Word Options dialog box, in which we're going to be working with a little bit later on. Now also, we're going to be taking a look at, because we do have a couple different areas. We have, right up here, we have our tabs. And our tabs are going to be such as the Home tab, Insert tab, Design, Page Layout, References, Mailings, Review, and View. And those tabs allow us to switch up our ribbon. And the ribbon is this main area right down here. And these are all of our different commands for each tab. So on our Home tab, this is our Home tab ribbon. And this would be the Insert tab ribbon. And so on and so forth. So you can go through there and you can click on some of the different ones and take a look and see what, are, what is underneath each tab. Now each tab uh, on there uh, is a related group of commands uh, that's on there. Of course you'll probably notice that inside of each of these tabs as well there's these little lines that go through here and a name on the bottom. And each of those uh, are commands, they're organized into these groups uh, that's on there. So we can take a look that underneath the home tab we have the clipboard group, font group, paragraph group, styles group, and the editing group uh, that is on there. Uh, of course, we do have a new little button that's over here that automatically hides it for us, uh, if we take a look there. And, of course, that's this little button right here, which is the Collapse the Ribbon. And you can see that there's the uh, screen tip for that, which actually shows you as well uh, the keyboard shortcut for that. Uh, taking a look just a little bit more around the Word window on there. Uh, of course, in this main area right here is what we have and what we call the Document Window. And of course this document window is going to contain several different elements that's on there and it displays the current document. And this is where you're going to enter text and format your document is in this document window. Now, by default, especially if you have recently installed a program, sometimes you will not have some things that you could see, such as the rulers. And of course I'm going to go to my View tab and we're going to take a look and we're going to view the rulers because this is an option that can be turned on and off by using the view tab and going into the show group uh, on there. But uh, in our document pane, or our document window I should say, uh, we have the two rulers. We have our horizontal ruler which displays left and right document margins as well as the tab settings and paragraph indents if there is any for the paragraph in which the insertion point is located. And here's the horizontal ruler right up here. We also have, uh, as well, the vertical ruler. And that's going to show us here uh, the document margins. And of course, the grayed out area that we have here, that is the margins for the document, which is generally some areas that can't be typed into unless it's used such as a header or a footer on there. Now, of course, those uh, margins are fully customizable. Now in addition on to our document window right over here to the side we have what we call our scroll bar and this one's our vertical scroll bar and of course it allows us to move up and down the page or move from page to page on some different documents. Now depending on how close you're zoomed into your document uh, you know right now you notice that I just have a vertical scroll bar. If I would zoom in quite a bit I would eventually end up uh, with another scroll bar uh, that goes around the bottom and that is my horizontal scroll bar and that allows me to go from side to side uh, on my document so I can take a look at everything that's on there. Now down here at the bottom as well this is another area that uh, uh, Word likes to use and that is the status bar and the status bar is a very powerful tool because uh, by default it will show the page numbers and the current page that you're on uh, as well as the total number of pages in a document. You can also show the number of words that you have. 
Uh, and it also shows some other things like the status of spelling and grammar checking. It also includes the view buttons, the zoom slider, and the zoom level button, which is over here on the other side. Because uh, here we have read mode, uh, print layout, web layout, and then here's our zoom slider as well as our zoom level button that's over here. And that allows us uh, to zoom in and out of the document, which you've seen just a minute ago. Now, of course, the status bar can be fully customizable as well. You know, you can add on some different information, such as if you want to see what a different section is or how many sections there is in the document. And, of course, we mentioned briefly over here, here are the view buttons that's on here, and this allows you to display the current document in either the read mode, print layout mode, or the web layout view. And, of course, we've seen over here briefly the zoom slider, and, of course, it has a little control button here that allows you to zoom in and zoom out of the document. Uh, on there so you can just use that as a slider to allow you to zoom in and out as well as a zoom level button over here that allows you to choose some predefined uh, zoom levels as well as where you can tell your own percentage of zoom that you would like to have and that's going to conclude video one uh, on there in video two uh, we'll be taking a look at the information on page word six in which we're actually going to be starting a document and typing in a document so you are now ready to move on uh, to window or excuse me word a video two and turn to page word six in your textbook